Welcome back to Linux Basics for Cybersecurity. In the first episode, we learned a few basic commands, explored the Linux file system, and even touched on user management in Linux. Today, we're going to build on that foundation by learning how to install tools on your system, and exploring some of the essential commands that every ethical hacker needs to know. So let's get started. Disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. It teaches Linux basics in the context of cybersecurity training using simulated environments, and does not promote or demonstrate any illegal activities. Chapter number one, package management and tool installation on Linux. Okay, so before we get started, you should know that every app or software installed on Linux is called a package within the Linux ecosystem. And in order to install these packages, we mainly have two types of tools within Linux called APT and DPKG. APT stands for Advanced Package Managing Tool, while DPKG stands for Debian Package Manager. Now the reason why APT has the word advanced in its name, is because it's a high-level package manager that's pretty simple to use, while DPKG is a low-level package manager, that requires you to install both the software and its required dependencies manually. Let me show you what I mean. So let's try downloading Team Viewer for Linux, by clicking on this .deb option right here. Once downloaded, we can head over to our downloads folder using the cd command like this, and list its contents to see the Team Viewer installation file right here. Now in order to install this .deb file using the Debian package manager, what we'll need to do is type in sudo space dpkg-i, and then input the name of the file like this. And upon hitting enter, you can see that it gave us an error saying some dependencies are missing, so what do we do now? Well this is where apt comes into play. Now before I show you how we can install a tool with apt from scratch, there's another cool thing you should know about it. So if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, where you've used dpkg to install something but failed due to missing dependencies, you can also use the sudo apt install-f command like this, and let apt automatically fetch or install the required packages. Anyways coming back, how can we install a tool with apt from scratch? Like if we wanted to install a tool like fastfetch, which displays system information in a stylish way, how would we do that? Well it's actually pretty simple. So instead of opening our web browser and looking for a .deb file, we can just use the sudo apt-install command like this, and then input the name of the package we want to install. And upon hitting enter, you'll see that apt is now asking for permissions to automatically install these additional dependencies that fastfetch needs to work. So if we type in y for yes, and hit enter to continue, you can see our software has now been installed. But how did apt install a software like this so easily by its name? Why doesn't it need a .deb file like dpkg does? Well that's because apt relies on something called a repository to retrieve packages automatically. A repository is basically a server, that contains a collection of both the software along with their package names that we might want to install. So whenever we run the sudo apt install command on our terminal, apt goes to that repository, and finds our specified package to download everything it needs to install it. Moving on, there are a couple of additional things you should know before we jump to the next topic, with the first one being that whenever you use the apt command to install a software, you should also use the apt update command before that, as it refreshes your system's package list and ensures you're downloading the latest versions from the repository. Next, not every software you might want to install is available in the default repository, and in that case, you either need to manually download the deb file, just like we did for team viewer, and then run the apt install-f command we covered earlier to complete the installation, or you would need to manually add that particular software to your repository, and then try to install it using the same apt command. So for example if I wanted to install OBS Studio on Ubuntu, you'll notice that they've provided a command to first add their software to Ubuntu's repository, and then install it using the same apt install command. Okay so now that we know how we can install stuff on our Linux machine, the question is, how do we remove it? Like for example if I wanted to remove the team viewer software we initially installed, what would the command be? Well there are actually two ways to do that. The first is using the sudo apt remove command, which simply uninstalls the software but keeps your configuration files and data saved while the second one is using the apt purge command, which deletes everything, removing the software and all of its configuration files. Next, what if we want to make sure that all of our installed software is fully up to date, what would the command be for that? Well there are actually two commands called sudo apt upgrade, and sudo apt full upgrade. apt upgrade updates all of your software without changing or removing anything else on your system, while the apt full upgrade gives apt the power to remove or replace dependencies if that's what's required to complete the update. Finally, you should also know that apt can do a bunch of other things beyond what we've just covered, and if you type in the apt-h command for help, you can see what those things are, with some of them even allowing you to list all the things installed on your system, or search for available packages directly from the repository. Okay so now that we've covered the two main ways through which apps can be installed on Linux, let's now also look at another method used to install multiple tools or scripts created by other users on GitHub. But before we do that, what I want you to do is first install a tool called git, which helps us in cloning a tool from GitHub directly to our machine. So the command is going to be sudo, apt install git, and then hit enter. 
Okay so now that Git is installed on our system, the next step is to simply head over to github.com, and look for a tool that we can install real quick. Let's go with this one right here called Bash, which is a pretty cool tool that customizes the look and feel of your terminal to make it more user friendly. So to download this, what we're gonna do is just copy the link at the top of the page right here, and then type git clone like this, followed by the URL we copied earlier. And upon hitting enter, git will clone the provided repository in our current working directory, which is downloads. So if we list the contents of our downloads folder real quick, and then cd inside bash's directory, we'll see a bunch of stuff here, so how do we install it? Well you see, in order to install tools found on github, it's always a good idea to follow the official documentation under the installation section right here, as not every tool is installed the same way, with some using pip or bundler depending on their programming language, while others may also provide the option to directly install the repository without cloning it manually using the git command. Anyways coming back, let's just copy these commands real quick, and paste them in our terminal to install the script. Speaking of scripts, before we move on to the next chapter, where we'll explore some of the essential commands that every ethical hacker should know, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video Brilliant.org. When you're learning Linux or any skill in cybersecurity, it's not just about memorizing commands, it's about learning how to think, break down problems, and build your logic step by step. That's exactly the kind of thinking pattern that Brilliant helps you get better at, with thousands of interactive lessons in foundational math, programming, science, data analysis, and AI, all designed to sharpen your problem-solving skills through hands-on learning. One of the courses that really stood out to me is programming with variables, as it walks you through how programs handle information, and sharpens the same kind of reasoning skills we rely on when scripting or debugging in Linux. Plus with its short and bite-sized lessons that you can do from your phone or laptop, it's super easy to stay consistent, and build a daily learning habit that actually sticks. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, head over to brilliant.org forward slash Annan Alley, or scan the QR code on screen, and get an exclusive 20% discount on Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening, let's get back to the video. Chapter number 2, Essential Commands That Every Ethical Hacker Should Know Okay so now that we know how we can install tools on our system, let's now take a look at some of the essential commands for ethical hackers, as they'll come in handy pretty much every time you're doing something inside Linux. Starting with some basic networking commands, the first one on our list is IP space A. What this command does is it simply lists all the available network interfaces on your system, along with their IP addresses like this. Now the reason why mine is only showing an Ethernet connection right here is because I'm running Linux on a virtual machine, but if you're using Linux directly on your system and are connected to Wi-Fi, you'll see something like WLAN 0 here, and your private IP address will be shown next to INET right here. If you're not sure about what a public or a private IP really is, you can check out this video by clicking on the I button above. Anyways coming back, the next command on our list is ping. This one's particularly useful for pinging and checking if a system is online, before scanning or testing it in a lab environment. The wget command is used to quickly download files from any URL, which is super handy when you want to grab a script without opening a browser, while curl is similar, but it can also send data or interact with APIs, which may be handy for things like testing web requests. Next, the tracer out command basically helps in showing the path your data takes to reach a target, which can help in network mapping or identifying firewalls where packets are getting blocked, while the ss command lists all the open ports or active connections on your system. Finally, the whois command displays the registration details of a domain, whereas the dig command fetches DNS information for that domain. Okay so now that we've covered some essential networking commands, let's move on to some file management commands in Linux, with the first one being the ls-la command. What this command does is it lists all the files in your current directory, including hidden ones, and lists them with their permissions owners or timestamps in a clean format. Next, the find command searches for files or folders by their name across any directory, whereas the grep command searches inside files for a keyword or a pattern. Nano and BIM are used to edit a file directly inside the terminal, whereas the MV and CP commands are used to move or copy files from one directory to another. Touch is the easiest and quickest way to create a file within terminal, while RM helps you in removing a file easily. For folders, MKDIR helps you in creating them, while RM-R is used to remove them, which helps you in finding out where a command or program is installed on your system, while zip and unzip are used to extract or bundle files. Finally, head and tail are used to quickly scan logs or look at the top or bottom of configuration files, while chmod and chown are used to change the owner of a file or make them executable. We'll talk more about them in the next part of the series. Anyway guys so that's it for the video. Before ending, I'd like to state that if you haven't watched the first part of the series, I'd highly recommend you checking it out as it covers some Linux fundamentals which are essential for an ethical hacker to learn, and build a strong hacking foundation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.